And a very good day. Mark Lee here, FX Trademark. Welcome to our FX Open. It's Monday, November the 29th, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time here for me in Toronto. It is 10.45 a.m. GMT, 3.45 p.m., almost at the close of the European session and into a full session of uh, a full swing in the U.S. session. Let's have a look how we how things are, are looking as we start the new week. As always, our starting point is on the dollar index. Last week we closed at 96.07. So the U.S. dollar, we've I mean we've had the strong run here from way back end of October. That's a month ago, really strong, and we can see the peak, the high 96. 94 almost at 97 and then we had the big sell-off on friday us dollar trying to fight back and now sitting at 96.34 let's have a look how gold our commodities and i always go straight to gold after looking at the dollar index because we know we have that inverse relationship strong us dollar weak gold Weak US dollar, strong gold, and even though it's trying to fight back the US today, just have a look how flat it's been since. Let's see what date this was. November the 23rd, we came to a low of 1781, unable to really maintain above or below that figure. It's tried, you can see. Have a look at these dojis over the last three days. Tried higher, tried lower but keeps coming back to that 1787, that comfort zone that it's sitting in for now. But as the U.S. is trying to fight back right now, we're seeing a uh, little bit of weakness on gold, sitting right now at, well, 1786. Safe to say, still hanging around that comfort level at 1787. Let's have a look at our majors, starting with our two european currencies the euro and the pound against the us firstly let's have a look at the euro so there we've had weak euro coinciding with strong US dollar the whole way until we got friday we did get that reversal could just be an outside day us dollar coming back against the euro and sitting right now at after closing last week at just above the 113 level, sitting now at 112.64. Let's just zoom in on the hourly, get some levels to work with. There is our support at 112.60. I'm putting in our resistance at 112.76. 15 pips, nice and tight. Let's just zoom out that little bit. And you can see the relevance of these levels. Have a look how the support we've just put in has been a previous support. And certainly our resistance has acted as resistance before. It's sitting comfortably right now. If the U.S. is to continue that fight back, we'll see a test of the 112.60 support level. If the euro wants to fight back, it's going to have to break above this resistance sitting now at 112.76. Let's have a look at the pound. Starting on the daily, let's take a step back, look at the bigger picture. The pound closed last week at 133.23. There you can see, try to fight back on Friday like the euro, but unable to and just maintained around that support level just above 133 today. US dollar is showing some strength, pound giving up again, and right now sitting at that 133.03, looking to test that 133 support level again. Zooming in on the intraday, there's our support for now, 132.95. Going to use this hourly candlestick for our resistance and support, 133.13, just above. 133 for resistance, just below for support, but sitting comfortably at that 133 level for now. If we zoom out a little bit, have a look at the resistance we've put in. If we go back, we can see where it fits into the big picture. And the support, yes, it has tried to break below here on Friday, but it did get pushed back up. Looks like it's testing the support again just under that 133, 132.96.
are two commodity currencies, the Canadian and the Australian. Let's start with the Canadian. Canadians, uh, US has been really strong against the commodity currencies. We can see how, how Friday, uh, end of the week, it closed at 127.84. Bit of a gap down over the weekend, but finding its way back again, sitting at 127.73, looking to come back to that same resistance level, the high of last week. Let's just zoom in. put in our horizontals, there's my resistance, and it's testing it right now as we speak, looking at looking to try and test that 127.80, and support keeping this really tight, 127.60, the bottom of this hourly candlestick, and if I zoom out, you can see we are, we went a whole leg higher on Friday, came back a little bit, you can see that that's the gap. In other words, when we opened up to start this new week, we start a little bit lower, but fighting its way back right now, looking to test the 127.80 as we talk. Similar on the Australian, appears in reverse because here it's a downtrend as opposed to an uptrend, but in both cases, we're seeing strong US dollar. Let's have a look on the daily. You can see a little bit of a gap up after the weekend. So although it closed out last week at 71.18, open to start this week at 71.30, the top of this candlestick, the top of the body, you can see. But coming back down to the low that we saw on Friday, there we are on the intraday, on the hourly. Just above the 71.35, there's our support right where we're sitting, 71.20, nice tight 15 pip range. But also what we I can see is a certain comfort level in this range, in the zone over here. Between the 71.20, the 71, just under the 71.40, it has been comfortable there before, strong US, if the US, now that we are entering the US session, session uh, coming to an end just finishing those power hours the three hours where we have the last of the European and the start first three hours of the US those power hours coming to an end now and it's just the US session let's see if the US can continue this run break below the 7120 support alternatively if there is a bounce this looks like the area it would bounce up off if the Australian is to take over Last of our majors, we're going to look at the US yen. I'm going to start on the daily. Closed last week at 113.33. Strong sell off of the US. We saw it against the yen. Moving averages even crossed down. Bit of a gap up to start this week. You can see one opened at 113. 68 now sitting at 113.60 looking to come down again let's zoom in on the hourly clearly we're seeing the US dollar try fight back interesting on the shorter time frames there I have a double top which is a reversal sign let's see if that does work out I'm going to put in that as my range, in fact, the top of this. And have a look at the resistance, this double top that I've just put it at 113.96, just under the 114 level. That's the high previous support. We can see that. And if I look at where I put the support, also a support level. So for now, US dollar sell off, yen strength in this past hour, looking to test this level. If the US dollar does fight back against the yen, this is the area we'd expect it to bounce off the pretty much the 113.59, the 113.60 area, and come back and look to test the 114. Our last look before I close out this session, I want to look at Bitcoin. 
starting on the daily. And we can see that it closed out last week at 54,183. Look how low it is right down here. That's where it really came and closed. A gap up after the weekend, now sitting at 56,969. That's the 57,000 level. Let's just zoom in and see if we can find some relevant levels to work with on the intraday. There is our resistance, 57 and a half, 57,500, and our support at 56,700. Sitting pretty tight in this range for now. Let's just zoom out a little bit. You can see the relevance again of this resistance area as well as this support. If Bitcoin does fight back, 57,500, 58,000 is where it will be targeting. If the sell-off continues that we saw at the end of last week, it's going to have to break the 56,700 on the downside. Good trading, guys.